at the question in a way that makes a difference for ourselves and for our business. Does that work? Perfect, sir. I'll go ahead. Let's play that video. So, da da. Hang on, I'm going to find it. Can you guys see it? Yes. Awesome. The final of the men's 100 meters butterfly and an absolutely packed stadium watching. Well, watching an average start there for Michael Phelps, and that's the first one of those we've seen. And I don't think he can afford to do this. He needs to be close to Kapich at the 50. Well, he had a good, he had a good race that 24 hours race, but Kapich is going like a, like a train. We're not sure if Phelps is going to have energy for this race, Andy. He's got to get a big turn here, but Kapich is taking it to him. Well, in this case, what was the difference between the time Michael Phelps clocked in and the time that Cabbage clocked in? What was one, it, like a millisecond or what was one that? one hundredth of a second? So it appears that in the world of high performance, the Olympic Games, that there is a difference between 7 p.m. and 7.01 p.m. Now, what I'm inviting us to observe is that in our lives and in our businesses, I, you don't relate to one minute as making a difference. And the question today, what is the difference between 7.01 and 7 p.m.? Uh, harbors that difference. I mean, what's the difference, really? Now, if you look in your life and in my life, I actually don't relate to it as a, as a difference. So, Gio, if you walked into a room at 7.01 and the meeting began at 7 p.m., in everyday life, do you, do you, would you consider yourself late? There are some environments that I am and some environments haven't even started and some environments they're like, you're on time. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. And uh, so one of the things I've been discovering for myself and creating with Giovanni is that there, there is this complicity that I have with myself and that I have with you that when I walk into a meeting that started at seven and it's 7.01, we silently agree that nothing will ever be said about it. That you're going to be nice and I'm going to pretend I'm on time. And that's our agreement. I see you smiling, Jacqueline. That's happened before, hasn't it? Yes but you're actually late. As a matter of fact, it happens all the time. So the, the question is not for Giovanni and I to answer, but it's the beginning of an inquiry for each of you watching here, participating here in the live studio audience and participating on Facebook. Where in your life does one second not matter 
Does one minute not matter? And it's not just arriving to a meeting. It actually permeates and is present throughout our entire lives. So I want you to look where in your life and in your business does it not matter to behave as if one hundredth of a second matters or to behave as if the next small action matters. And now let's look and see what is the impact of not relating to it as if it matters in life and in business. So that's how we begin the inquiry, Giovanni. Yeah. And I, I, I as we, as we open the inquiry, Sorrel, what's opening up for me in that question is, um, for the most part, most of my life, um, and well, right, well, to be more specific, right now, Sorel, right now is in my life, one millisecond makes no difference to me. So that's how I'm unaware I am for the opportunity of that. Like, I'm not, I didn't even know there was a, such a thing as a millisecond as the opportunity for my performance. It's just not in my radar. And um, one minute, it's kind of in my radar, kind of, sort of, like, ah, yeah, sort of, right? Um, but for the most part, in my whole life, my, my, most of my adult life, being late or being early was not very important. As far as performance, it was like, it was like very casual for my whole life. And and I think what started making a difference, Sorel, and I want to kind of put it in the space for me, was that when I finally had a breakthrough in this, was when I was able to be in this conversation by taking away all guilt and shame about being late or not, and defending myself, and, and finally being able to actually recognize, well, how, do, how am I setting up my life so that time matters for me? And, and being on time for something requires a significant organization prior to it. And that revolutionized my life. But I couldn't do it until I took away the guilt and shame, until I took away the having to defend myself, but actually looking, but actually looking, my gosh, I'm never on time. I'm always defending it. And if you don't agree with me, if you're not, if you're not have complacency with me about it, then clearly you're not my friend, clearly. And so I finally, I just got lucky to be part of a community who was not interested in being my friend. And finally, they, they, they supported the conversation so that I recognized that everything was at stake in that one minute. Everything is at stake. My relationship with my children is at stake in that one minute. My relationship with my significant other is at stake in that one minute my relationship with my clients. It's kind of an obvious one, but it's, but it's not. My relationship with you, Sorel, is at stake in, one, in that one minute. I'm talking too much, Sorel, but she just opened up all of those things, Sorel, thank you. Yeah, and uh, what I also started to discover, Gio, is that when I said I would be there at 7 p.m., I actually made a promise. And so beyond being on time and relating to being on time as something I should do, so I won't be in trouble, there was the opportunity to take it to the next level, right? So now walk away from being on time for a moment and start to relate to the, start to be present and relate to the promises you've made in life. And right now I assert that I or you don't live as if the things you said you would do or promises you made, such promises to honor. And that the same complicity that there is when I walk into a room at 701 and nobody says anything and I pretend I'm on time, 
that the same complicity exists between myself and myself when I promise myself to do something or I said I'd do something and I don't do it. I don't hold myself to account and I pretend nothing mattered. And the same thing happens if I make a promise to you to deliver something, Mark, and I don't deliver it, what's right there is almost always your desire to be nice to me and not quote unquote offend me and letting me slide. So I'm inviting you to look, look and see where are you letting yourself slide and letting yourself off the hook and where are you letting others in your life on your team in your life and your family slide and off the hook and what do you say to yourself to justify letting yourself and others off the hook so the whole construct begins to be the kind of space where you get to see for yourself that in order to remain comfortable as the person I think I am, in order to invalidate and continue to be that, I must defend every single ounce of it and I must have an agreement with you, whether silent or explicit, that you won't say anything about it. You won't hold me to account. I won't hold you to account. Life is hunky-dory. Let's move on. And then we look. And in the end, what you really wanted to accomplish, the life you really wanted to live, the business you really want to create, creeps along and never quite gets to be the business you want it to be. And the life you want never gets to be quite the life you want to live. Yes, Gio. I wanted to get your thoughts on, and you know, everyone else, please don't, I'm not trying to hijack this thing. Go ahead and raise your hand and I'll just be quiet. But I wanted to get your thoughts on Sorrel here on how do you, and I know we're in an inquiry, so it's not like you're going to give me a solution or a recommendation. I know we're in an inquiry, but how do you dance with the aspect of, man, I don't want to lose my friends. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose the people that are close to me by being a police of you're on time, you're not on time. You told me you were going to do something. You didn't do it. Where is your word? Your life is never amount to anything. This is why your life is the way it is. How, how do you dance with all of that and, um, and still create an environment where the people around me, around you, begin to be inspired by what you're pointing to? You know, uh, that, that, that reminds me of the first time I was one minute late and somebody pointed it out and how angry I was internally. <laughs> So I walked into the room late and uh, the leader of the, uh, of, of, uh, the particular meeting said, Sorrel, you're late. And then I looked at my watch and I said, are you kidding me? It's less than 30 seconds. Get out of my face. <laughs> so I've been on the other side of being the one who's going to write you off because you're holding me to account for being great. And uh, that person didn't let up. Uh, and that conversation lasted probably a half hour until I got for myself that, you know, I could be with one minute being something that's important in my life. So <clears throat> I think I've probably gained more friends and gained more partners in mustering up the courage to channel that same person who called me out when I was one minute late and 
working to be that person in the lives of others. So in the NGO, I'm finding out that what I'm afraid to lose in terms of admiration or, or acceptance in the environment I am by continuing and perpetuating the complicity for mediocrity, the more I buck that trend, uh, the better friends I end up having and the better an environment I create for performance around me. Mm. Mm. So I want to hear other people. Uh, where in your business and in your life are you relating to one minute or small promise you made as insignificant? Rose, go ahead. Yeah, or what you're hearing from this conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, so interesting. <laughs> All right. So my parents were like exact opposites. My mother was meticulously on time. She was in her seat in the pew in church on Sunday morning, 15 minutes early. No kidding. My dad, oh my God, my, that was the biggest argument in our household is, Robert, you're always late. But my father was such an extraordinary, whatever, carpenter, mechanic, ma jack of all trades, master of most, that people were more than willing to wait for him. So it nurtured his propensity to like, be casual with time, right? Because they're, they're going to be there. In fact, if a few of them went away, that would be a good thing, right? Because we never could get to my dad. Others were always waiting for him. So that's the household that I grew up in. So I grew up very casual with time. And I see that very much in the background for me now. What has shifted is that I, I now get that time is a measure. And a measure allows you to locate yourself. And it's how I locate my integrity is through the measures. So that's my relationship with time now. So I will show up for the seven o'clock meeting at 6.50 because I've made a commitment that's important to me and it locates where I stand. Not because I have that kind of relationship with time. So it's kind of a side door thing, right? But I wanted to share that because that's like, this is just an amazing conversation. And I just never pulled the whole thing together until we started talking. So, so, so thanks for the stimulation. <laughs> Sora, I love what Rose is pointing to. I'm going to write it down. I, I love that time is a, is, is a metrics, right? It's measuring something. And what it can be measuring is my integrity. Not like good, not like bad, but like where I am in my integrity with my relationship with the things I say I'm going to do. I just kind of heard it that way. That was so brilliant. Thank you, Rose. Yeah, and Gio, the other thing I'm hearing in that is that <clears throat> while it's a measure of integrity, it's not a measure of integrity for integrity as its own sake. It's a measure of, of integrity as in the integrity of who I am for myself, given that I am now someone who inside of a minute can relate to my existence as being given by the promises I made, but not the identity I'm driven to protect. Thank you, so much. Andrea. Can I, say, can I say one more thing? Yeah, Rose. You know, also in dancing with the world, the universe, the eternal, right? A minute matters. I had a cousin who was in Miami for going, you know, go, getting ready to board a cruise, walking across the street and a motorcycle <clears throat> rounded the corner, hit her, threw her a long distance and she died. One minute mattered. So in destiny, a minute's important. If you have an intention and you mi miss your intention by a minute, could you miss your destiny? Or could you walk into an, uh, an unexpected destiny? So yeah, a minute matters from that perspective too. Thank you, Rose. Andrea, good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sorel, uh, for making us think about 
a relationship with time and, and not only time, but the time being the vehicle for us to understand a relationship with ourselves. So that's what I've heard from the, from the discussion. It is, time is just the vehicle, how I read it. Uh, like Rose was saying, is he opened the brain to think differently about this construct, which is time. But it's also if I, the way that I, and, and most of you know that I'm a coach and I help procrastinators, but instead of t- thinking about time management, it's about mind management because it's just the power that you have in your mind to respect your calendar and just do the things that you promised you were going to do because it's the respect that you deserve to yourself. It's like thinking, like Sorel, when you were speaking, it triggered really my mind when you, when you are, let's say, in pain and you need to see a doctor and you schedule your chiropractor or your regular doctor and you're looking forward to that appointment, you're usually never late because you already know that you're going to gain something from it. So that's how we should see every minute of our lives. You're going not just to gain something, but you're going to be present with it because and that's where it's like if you promise yourself you're going to read or you're going to be in that meeting at seven and not seven one, it's that promise that you do to yourself. And is it more like a reward knowing that you were on time and that's how your brain, I don't know, it triggered my mind like thinking when you're going to a doctor, you're, you're going to a doctor. You don't cancel last minute unless it's an urgent thing or you're not late because you're going to lose the appointment and you need to do it again. So it's thinking in that relationship. It's just a relationship we have with ourselves, which is uh, presented in the form of respecting time, being on time with other, to other, with others, to others. My English is not connected, but respect to others and respect to yourself. That that's what I read. That's what I heard from you today. That that's uh, you know. Thank you for discovering that for yourself. And and the thing that you're triggering now is that when I look at my. Uh, you know, everyday relationship to time, everyday relationship to my promises, I can see how I'm wired to justify what I didn't do when I didn't do it, to justify that I'm late when I'm late, like I have a reason. Exactly, and you, and, think, and you find ideas and, and <laughs> positives as to why, well, I was late because of this, this, and don't yeah. find the proof that you were wrong. <laughs> And then the other piece that I'm seeing is that every time there is an emotion attached to it, whether the emotion is my embarrassment that I'm avoiding or my superiority that I'm asserting, you know, hey, I'm, I'm entitled to being late. <laughs> Whatever it is, there's always that emotion attached to the validation or invalidation or justification. And when it comes to being someone who's now honoring myself as a promise I made, more often than not, there's no emotion attached to that. So literally, I'm faced with the challenge of being the one to generate the emotion attached to the new way of being or being the one to generate being in action, absent any emotion whatsoever, like doing it anyway, not just because I said so, but because who I am is that. So thank you for opening that up, Andrea. Thank you. Jacqueline. Thank you all for this topic today on being on time and every millisecond counts. Um, You know, I I want people to respect my time. So in regard, I try to be on time for others. You know, it doesn't always happen, but for the most part, I try to be on time, um, whether it's going to my office, um, pre-COVID, whether it's being on my Zoom calls. And as a talent manager, we always tell our talent to be 15 minutes early for their shoot, for their auditions, because 15 minutes is on time. Um, when, if you arrive right at the, the time that they ask you to be there, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, what have you, then you're late because you don't know what's going to be happening in that 15 minutes, that 10 minutes prior. You may need to fill out some paperwork. Um, you may need to find parking. 
So 15 minutes is actually um, on time. So the topic today, uh, being on time, every millisecond counts, every second counts, every minute counts, is very important. And Rose, I also, my parents are, are polar opposites as well as far as time. My mom, late, except when she was, except when she was a, a, a school teacher. And she had to be on time. But other than that, um, my father's always, you know, pushing her a little bit. Come on, Hazel. Come on, Hazel. Um, the bank is about to close, Hazel. But, you know, she, she's relaxed. And she should be. She, she's retired. She's almost 80, you know, which, which is a blessing. So she doesn't necessarily have to be as timely as she used to be. And, and, and also, when I, when I would fly in all the time, and if I knew my parents, was, my brother and I have this thing. If our parents are picking us up, you may as well get another ride. You may as well call one of your siblings because they're going to be at least an hour late after you arrive at the airport. And it's like, wait a minute, what? My, and my father would call, yes, we're on our way. We just left the house. Okay, but you're 45 minutes away from the airport and I'm already here. <laughs> so, so that's one thing that we always have with them. Find your own ride. Don't count on the parents for that. But thank you very much today for time. And, and being mindful and respectful of even your own time. Thank you. You're welcome, Jacqueline. You're welcome. And uh, th thank you for creating that. And I want to invite you to hear the complicity you have with your parents, how you actually adjust your life to how you already know them to be, and your willingness to never confront that. Can you see that? Now consider that that willingness we confronted it. <laughs> we can maneuver around them now. <laughs> I know. Right? We now, confronted it. You know, you'll, you'll tiptoe around it. You'll do whatever you do. So while we use 7 p.m. and 7.01 to anchor this inquiry, uh, I'm also inviting everyone to take it beyond just being on time. Consider that in that one second, that one minute, is the very definition of who you say you are for yourself. It is your promises live in that one minute. Uh, your vision for your business lives in that one minute. Uh, Andrea, you specialize in procrastination, right? Uh, how you procrastinate, whether you procrastinate willingly or it's by default lives in that one minute. So uh, while we're talking about time, I'm inviting each of you to leave today with a new relationship to self. Anchored in who I am isn't the identity I'm defending the embarrassment I'm protecting, who I am are the sum, you know, it is, I am the promises I make, period. Whatever those promises are, small or big. And I can be living life using my justifications and my invalidations as a signal to point me like my rudder, right? Or my true north to say, you know what? I'm not being who I say I am. Let me true it up. Jill, Mark's got a question. Go ahead, Mark. Um, I, it's a statement and a question. I was gonna say, you can tell a lot about a person and their business based on how on time they are or how not on time they are. Have you guys seen that correlation with people who are always showing up late to something or, or they're early? Can you, can you see that their business is doing well based off of them being a timely person and respecting your time? I, I, Mark, I used to until an episode here in the Daily Huddle. I don't know who said it was don't judge me on the chapter of my life now don't judge me from my past and that really rewrite rewrite it my my opportunity to see people's uh, to see people's future that really rewrite it for me because many times i've been judged for a bad day 
or for the chapter I'm going through. So I used to. Now, the opportunity of the question of what you're saying, it really is a, a, a beautiful sort of reflection for myself to see where I am in my business, right? Or where I am in the areas of my life that are not working as well as I want to. To see, well, it might have something to do that one, with that one minute that Sorel is pointing to. Because I'm, I'm not treating that one, that one minute like my life is at stake. That's what I had to say about that, Sorel. Anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, Mark, thank you for the question. And the question itself harbors the very trap that I fall into and that we all fall into. This conversation and any conversation on the daily huddle, as Gio's pointing, is really for you. The minute you start to use it to assess, evaluate, and judge others, it falls apart. Because that very assessment itself and evaluation takes you away from the work itself, which is tending to your own constitution as your promises. The minute you shift it to somebody else, it falls apart. So Gio, what are your last words, my friend? It's 38 after, we gotta go. So really Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity of the last words. Thank you all for being here. Kimberly, Maria, Sangria, Rochelle, Rose, Hampton, Jacqueline, Mark, and those of you who join us. Don't forget to see you, man. Those we can't see and those of you who are on Facebook, thank you for being part of the Daily Huddle family. I love you. Have a great rest of the day. Be on time. Make money. And I'll see you tomorrow at nine in the morning. Thank Have a good day, everybody. Good day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.